Hello there, welcome to AIM. My session is Have a Readathon. I'm Julie Olson, a library media specialist from Conway, and this is my 36th year to be an educator in our state. My third readathon was canceled due to COVID 19 last spring, and that will definitely impact my budget this fall. About the same time, my 55th book fair was also canceled. And I'll admit, although I love them, I'm kind of leery about holding a fall book fair, at least one in school. In our meeting this month with Cassandra Barnett, we discussed the safety issues of holding an in-school book fair. Online only was recommended, and that makes sense if you picture all of the kids and parents crowded together into your book fair space. How in the world do you maintain social distancing? If you think about everybody touching everything and maybe not having any volunteers and trying to handle cash and credit cards and everything that the kids have handled, an in-school book fair may just not feel safe. And there's other options. You could have an online fair, of course. But today I want to talk to you about my experiences having two different readathons because maybe this will be the answer for you. Through our RISE training, we know that librarians are being recognized as leaders who can help with many of the goals. For instance, goal two is creating community collaboration. Goal three is cultivating a school-wide culture of reading. And both of those goals are not only perfect for us as librarians, they're perfect for having a readathon. As you can see, you can possibly earn a lot of money for your library program. I have a pretty generous budget in Conway, but still, when I saw these numbers floating through my email inbox, I was both terribly intrigued and pretty sure it was a scam. But I went to talk to my principal about it, and I contacted one of the schools that I was familiar with and said, hey, is this whole readathon thing for real? And I got enough good answers that I decided to give it a try. It wasn't a scam. Not at all. These are my numbers. If you look on the right side, you'll see that in 2018, my first readathon raised a little over $11,000, and of that, we received $8,300. That was profit. That was after the readathon people took out their part for administrative duties. $8,300. I have never made that much at a book fair. Not that I got to keep that much, at least. In 2019, I had the flu right in the middle of our readathon, and we still cleared nearly $5,700. Guys, the readathon thing is the real deal. So, maybe you're interested at this point, but you need more information. So let me tell you a little bit about what's involved. The first thing, of course, is you've got to talk to your principal and you've got to set aside a two week period. A readathon requires 10 reading sessions, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Of course, you're also going to have to get your teachers on board, and I'll talk about that in a minute, too. But get those two weeks booked on your school calendar and don't worry about quarantine. Because, like my book fair got canceled last spring, if I had planned my readathon during that time, I could have rolled with it. I could have gone right on with it had I had enough bravery to realize, just keep going, just keep moving, it's going to be okay. Um, if you're at school, readathon works great. But I believe that you could do a readathon even if the school kids are quarantined. Each grade level or class or student is going to set a daily reading goal. And remember, there's 10 sessions over the two weeks. Notice that I didn't specify a time limit or number of pages. That can vary from student to student or class to class or even grade to grade. That is completely all up to you what the goal is. 
The Readathon folks provide a lot of free tools to help you do your Readathon. They have online timers, online trackers. Each kid, each class has their own dashboard, and this shows their results building from day to day. As my kids were reading, the money started rolling in. We were all so happy and surprised. The kids rat bucks accounts also started growing. Now, the mascot of the readathon is that little rat guy. Took me a while to figure this out, but R A T, readathon. That's where it all ties together. I'm getting ahead of myself though. Let's talk about the reading. What do they read? Well, the short answer is anything, anywhere, anytime. Those 10 reading sessions could be whatever the teacher already had planned for reading that day anyway. The reading session could be going over the scholastic news. The reading session could be some independent work on Google Classroom. It could be free reading time for the kids. It doesn't have to be a big deal. The 10 sessions just have to involve reading, reading social studies, reading your chapter book, letting the kids read their own picture books, whatever you want. Now, some of my ideas, remember all of this was before the coronavirus, so some of my ideas may not work this year because of the social distancing, but hopefully my ideas will kind of spark new potential ideas for you and we can move on from here. But let me share a little bit. One of the favorite reading sessions for my library kids was Bear Cave Readers. And all in the world we did was pull the chairs out and let them crawl under the table and read. Last year, my firsties loved stinky feet reading. I had them leave their socks on, take their shoes off and line them up along the wall. And then we spread out all over the library and read stories. It was so easy, but the kids loved it. My second grade teachers planned a sunshine reader's day. Everyone got to bring a pair of sunglasses and they all went outside, enjoyed some extra time in the sun, reading and sharing books together. By the way, these are pictures of my kids at my school and I wanna protect their little identities. And that's why you're gonna see these little clip art faces. Some of them may look a little strange, but I hope you understand. Another idea that we had was 3D Reading Day. I have a collection of 3D books. Some of them were my son's when he was little and some of them I've collected along the way. And this was a fun center where the kids could rotate through and enjoy the 3D books and it counted as their reading session that day. Our third grade teachers had a Read to a Stuffy Friend Day that was a big, big hit. My first and third grade teachers teamed up to have big buddy readers. It was also a hit. Not sure how you would do that this year with social distancing, but it would be worth a try when we get through this time. You can come up with all kinds of extra cool reading day ideas, but remember for your sessions, simple works too. Yes, lots of extra spacing out may be needed this year, but a cozy reading day is easy to pull off. My fourth grade teachers already had this certain escape room reading lesson planned, and they asked me if that would work as a session. Um, yes, it definitely did, and the kids had a blast. Flashlight readers, of course. Camp out readers, you bet. You can call it whatever you want. Use your imagination and let those kids read. Our wonderful Mr. Smith of the Teacher Tipster YouTube fame came up with this reading idea. We called it Tell a Joke Day, and then he also had Share a Poem Day. Both of these were big fun for his first graders and they completely cleaned out my 800 shelves. Readathon is a great time to schedule your annual book character parade too. 
and it counts as a session. If it's about reading, it counts as a session. Many of my teachers used audiobooks during their reading session, or they turned on a Ryan and Craig book video, or they used tumble books. All of these could count as reading sessions, and everything that was mentioned by any teacher was enjoyed. Lots of our kiddos enjoyed FaceTime or Skype reading sessions with a grandparent, or maybe mom or dad was traveling for work, or they read to a favorite auntie or uncle. It was really a fun time, and they enjoyed it, and it counted as their reading session for the day. Our second grade teachers concocted several sessions with Storytime STEM Fun. These had already been planned, but hey, it worked for Readathon. It was a little bit of double dipping, but we clocked those minutes. So hopefully by now, your idea wheels are starting to whirl and you're thinking, sign me up. But some of you may be thinking, I need a little more info. What exactly do I have to do as the host of this thing? Well, that's a good question. You are the front end planner. You're the recruiter to get the teachers on board. You're the marketer and the publicist. You need to tell about it in your newsletter. You need to get it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever your school uses. You need to send out information on Remind. You're the one that's going to get those teachers on board and pass out the paperwork that Readathon sends you to get to the teachers to send home with the kids. Basically, you want to get those parents excited and ready to help and get those kids excited and ready to read. One of the very first things you've got to do is set some goals. Readathon requires lots of word of mouth action. Kids are going to have to get their mom or their dad to set up a dashboard, and that's going to track their minutes, whether they're at school or whether they're reading extra at home. Um, they're also going to ask mom and dad to send out an email or a social media post asking friends and family to donate a one-time lump sum. And the letter that goes home explains all this, explains how to set up the dashboard, explains how the whole thing works. So it's really, really nice. The money can be any amount. I think the lowest is like $5, and we had, we had some pretty nice donations. Um, it, it's added through the website with the donor's credit card. So that is a big plus versus book fair. I did not really have to handle any cash. There is a way to accept cash or a check, but in my last two readathons, I have received less than $300 that way. I did not promote that way. I wanted them to use the credit card so I didn't have to handle the cash, but that is completely up to you. For the donation, the student commits to fulfilling all 10 reading sessions, one a day over the two weeks. And remember, these reading sessions are things that they were going to be doing in class anyway, unless the teacher planned some extra fun things. If a student misses school, independent reading at home for a goal that they set themselves catches them right up again. It is so, so easy. To keep the momentum high, you've got to keep sharing what's going on. I got my teachers to send me pictures of things like the stuffy friend reading and the stinky feet reading. I would post these pictures on Facebook or I would send them the Remind and I would tell the parents how proud I was of the kids, how many minutes that grade had read so far. And then I also planned tie-in activities during those two weeks of reading sessions. Um, Battle of the Book would work great here, or maybe a um, family book drive. These would be great ways to keep the momentum going. You can also plan some fun challenges for your eager readers who are hooked on trying to make their dashboard totals rise. After all, this is kind of how it works. Let's say grandpa donates $20. Well, 
Well, if you've chosen the reward store version of Readathon, the, of that $20, 15% goes into the student's Rat Bucks account. And at the end of the Readathon, they get to choose how to spend that money. And Readathon mails those prizes directly to the school. It's really cool. Plus, Grandpa, who donated the 20 bucks, he can check into the dashboard every day and see how the little readathoner is doing. And lots and lots of donors actually did check in. You can track that as the librarian too. It was a lot of fun. But the sweetest thing was that the donors are even able to leave little encouraging messages on the kids' dashboard. The messages were the best part to me. The things that the granddads or the aunties or the friend or the neighbor or the, the person from church that sits in the row behind them, the things that they left as messages were just the coolest part. One year, the very first year, 18, I hosted author visits and I was supposed to repeat that in May when we had our readathon this year, which got canceled. Um, but that's another way to build the excitement of reading. I had many teachers who invited guest readers or they planned mystery readers for their daily reading sessions. And the kids loved trying to guess who was coming to read to them that day. That was a lot of fun. Throughout the readathon, I can't say this enough, as the marketer, as the publicist, never let up sharing and promoting on social media. I liked to brag on those folks who were sharing and setting up dashboards and getting donors. But again, I tried not to focus on the money. I would say things like, way to go third grade. We've got, you know, maybe 167 dashboards out of 200 set up. Keep going. I'm so proud of you. Remember, if you don't have a dashboard, you can't track your minutes. So get signed up today. That was usually all it took to get a lot more dashboards going the next morning. Share your goals for your funds too. Share how your kids are enjoying the readathon and how the kids are benefiting during the readathon, but they're also going to benefit when you're able to purchase whatever it is that you're planning on. These little pieces of paper were from my suggestion box. My kids and I um, decided that we would spend X percent on new books for the library. So they were very, very busy during this time giving me suggestions of what they wanted me to buy. Figure out a way to promote what the kids are doing at school too. The kids may not see your notices on the Facebook page. They may not see what you've put in the newsletter. So I made a big bulletin board out in the hallway and as classes finished books, maybe it was a picture book, maybe it was their guest reader, but they were able to come to the library and get a slip that looked like a little book on the end and write down the title and the author for me and put it on um, our bulletin board. And the next time I do this, you have good ideas later, don't we? And um, the next time I do this, I'm gonna color code it by grade. So maybe kindergarten will be purple, first grade will be yellow, second grade will be orange and so on. But it was fun to do it this way too. This is actually not my bulletin board. And um, this was from where I got the idea. As you're sharing what's happening on social media and in your newsletter, be sure and share the why. Talk to your kids about why you're having the readathon, why you're having so much fun reading together. Share with them what you're reading during the sessions. Share with them why you're all working so hard to raise the money together. Make sure that they have ownership. And the easiest way to do that is to dream with your kids. Give them some examples of what the school could provide if you collect however many dollars your goal is. Have several suggestions and let the kids vote on what they want to buy. What's their first choice? What's their second choice? What's their third choice? This is the little free library that my kids earned the very first year. It was kind of expensive because I wanted the real deal. I wanted it to be on the map and the whole thing with the little nameplate. 
But the kids picked that. That's what they wanted too. They liked the idea of being able to get books after school or during the summer or on the weekend when the school was closed. I told them that if they raised X amount of money, we would be able to buy the Little Free Library and enough paperbacks to stock it through the whole summer. And that's what we did. We also bought many, many new books for our library shelves, and that was fun too. So let's say you're all excited and you want to do it. What's first? Well, first talk with your principal, tell her what's going on or tell him what's going on, get your two weeks on the school calendar, and then go to readathon.com. And that's where you're going to set up your homepage. You're going to get your instructions. There are neat timelines, all kinds of planning pages. Everything you could possibly think of is on there. Readathon.com is a well-oiled machine. You can tell they have done this many, many times and they've thought of everything. It is great. So little work for so much result. I'm going to warn you, though, be prepared to make lots of choices. So don't do this right before your two weeks start. You're going to have to give yourself some time. One of the choices is rewards. Do you want to have no rewards and just earn money? You could do that. I chose the reward store. And the reward store is what I was mentioning before about grandpa's donation. If grandpa puts $15 into little Susie's account, 15% of that goes into her Rat Bucks account. So at the end of the readathon, she can shop at the reward store and then those prizes are sent to her. I also gave a little surprise um, to students who got their dashboard set up and then kids that met the school goal but also went on to read extra at home i gave extra little rewards to them throughout the fair just little things once you've read over everything and you've got your home page set up and you've talked to your principal and got her on board or got him on board plan a faculty meeting to share about the process and that's where you're going to talk like i'm talking to you today Start talking it up early enough so that teachers can be thinking ahead and asking their questions. The staff at Readathon is amazing at getting back to you quickly with answers. So if someone asks you something you don't know, just write it down and email Carrie. She will get right back with you. Um, as you're explaining it to the teachers, be sure to emphasize that they do not have to come up with lots and lots of big, fun, new, splashy ideas for that two weeks. The reading sessions during the school day can totally be reading lessons that were already planned. They can be reading from the social studies book. It can be reading and going over the scholastic news. It can be listening to teacher read chapter book after recess. It does not have to be a big, fun, splashy thing, and that is totally up to you. Okay, there are several ways to register your readers, and again, you've got choices, but this is what I did. I downloaded an Excel file, a CSV file, through my library software, and I use my district uses Book Systems Atrium. Um, you could get the CSV file from your office. You could do it a lot of different ways, but I just did it that way. I printed out the class list on my, I didn't print it out, I'm sorry. I made a file and I had their classroom teacher, their last name, their first name. Um, Readathon will tell you what your columns need to be in your instructions. It's so, so easy. But after I got my, um, Excel files with the kids' names. Before I sent it to Readathon, I looked over the names to make sure that it wasn't the um, birth certificate name that comes out through Atrium. For instance, I have a kid named Anderson that goes by AJ. Well, I knew he would want AJ on his dashboard and on his personalized notes home. So I changed those things before I sent the CSV file 
to read a thon. Those names show and it means something to the kids. So I, I do feel like that's worth your time to go through and make sure that they're right. The handouts that you receive are top notch. They come organized with a label that tells you which teacher needs which packet. You don't have to count anything out. You don't have to worry about kids' names being in the wrong packet. It's awesome. The notes are printed on nice, heavy paper, full color. Like I said, personalized with the child and the teacher's name. It is nice, very, very nice, and so easy for you. All you have to do is look at the label and pass it out. They also send you these bright green bracelets for each child. Um, they're kind of a little plasticky paper that's got a peel-off stick um, to make it attach around the child's wrist. And they're imprinted with Ask Me About My Readathon. They tell you what day to send them home, what day to send the notes home. Um, there's all kinds of posters for you to hang, and it's it's just wonderful. They just do a really, really super job. And if you're confused about anything, they've got lots and lots of little videos for you to watch. Super organized. I love it. Once it's go time, it's really nice because, you know, when book fair starts, you're exhausted when it starts because you've done so much setup. With Readathon, you're just kind of on go. Yeah, it's great. You probably will be shocked like I was too at how quickly the money starts pouring in. If you look at my little quote at the bottom, I had passed my forms out on Monday and by Wednesday, we had already earned $1,400 and we weren't even starting our readathon until the next Tuesday. So if you get your excitement built, you may be really shocked at how much money you're raising very, very quickly. Um, again, I bragged on families who were sharing by email, who were getting dashboards set up. And honestly, I'm just both times I've been touched by how many folks lined up to support our little readers. Keep cheering your kids on. Brag on parents, even if they don't want to give a donation or they don't want to ask for a donation. Um, I did press pretty hard for the parents to set up those dashboards and I told the kids that their mom or dad could email me and give me permission to set up their dashboard if they didn't have a device at home to do it. Because when the teacher has a reading session in the classroom, um, she can check which kids are absent. So obviously they didn't do the reading session in the classroom, so they don't get credit for that one. But if you're child doesn't have a dashboard, there's nowhere for those minutes to go. So if they don't get their dashboard set up until after the readathon gets started, they're missing out on some minutes and that's no fun. So I did press hard for them to get the dashboard set up before we began. The kids love to check their dashboards. During library time, they want me to pull up their class and show me how many minutes their class has read in all, how much money that they've raised in all. They want to see the reward store and see what fun things they might be able to purchase and get sent to them after the fair. Um, the teacher and the librarian are the ones that document the reading sessions at school, but students and parents can document reading at home. I worried about that at first. I thought some of the kids might fake it, but even if they did, it wouldn't matter. Um, the reading is just the for fun part. It doesn't have anything to do with the reward store or anything else. And honestly, I don't think I've ever had anybody cheat over the last two book um, readathon times. Share, share, share progress. And enjoy the data. Readathon has all kinds of data. Um, they have great ways to track everything that's going on from the number of minutes read per student, per class, per grade, per school. They even have interesting things like which teacher hasn't even gotten started yet. 
um, which class doesn't have any dashboards set up yet. So you know where to send a little encouraging email or where to offer a little bit more help and support to get a class moving. The data was amazing. And the second readathon, I figured out a lot of things that I missed the first readathon. So that's a lot of fun too. Every morning, you're going to be able to log in and see how your school is doing by kid, by class, by grade. I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun to see those numbers grow. And depending on how techy you are, if your school uses Facebook to get news out to parents, you may or may not want to play with Facebook ads. Um, to increase your reach. This was something that does not have anything to do with the actual readathon company. This was just something I had read about and wanted to try. So um, since I'm in charge of the Facebook page at my school, I used my own money and I experimented by making a Facebook ad and it actually did increase our reach quite a bit and helped us um, reach a lot of people who were related to our school indirectly, and it actually led to a few community-based sponsors, which was super, super neat. That's just an idea I thought I would throw out there. After the two weeks is over, you will be the one to decide when to hit the End Readathon button. Once you hit that button, supporters are still able to keep donating for up to 10 days after you say, we're done. After those 10 days, you will get the first of two different checks. The first check will be for 80% of your total minus readathons cut, which is not very big. And I feel like with all of the things they do to support you, they've earned it. The remaining 20% of your proceeds will be sent 30 days after you click end. And the delay there is to account for like potential credit card chargebacks or bad checks, things like that. The part that they keep as an admin fee, in my opinion, was fine um, because honestly, they do offer a lot of support on their end. Plus, um, if you compare it to a book fair, you earn a lot more money for a lot less effort. And all of the focus is on getting kids to read. It's, it's just a really neat thing. As you wind down, if you've chosen the reward store version, remind the kids to spend their readathon bucks. They will have 10 days from when you click that end button. The prizes come to your school all bagged up and sorted by teacher. The prizes are all labeled with the student's name. It is so organized. The first time the prizes came, I just grinned. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It was so, so, so organized for me. Um, I um, always print off their sheet. They have prize sheets on the website that you can print off. And it's got two little boxes that shows like the class, the kid's name, did they receive their prize or were they absent? And besides checking that, I always have the kids put their initials right beside where I checked that I gave them their prizes just so I could look back on it and know for sure that I gave it directly to the child. And that just saved me some worry. If a prize is not right for some reason, the team at Readathon has been super quick to correct the issue. For instance, um, one of the kids bought a fidget spinner one year and she put it in her little desk and she went out to recess. Well, when she came back from recess, somebody had broken it. And Readathon was super, super nice. They sent another one right away. It, it arrived like in two days. It was really, really nice. Another time, Two little girls had ordered the same kind of bubbles and they both wanted the pink one. Of course, I called Readathon and explained the situation and she said, oh my gosh, we will send another pink bubble. No big deal. It's just little things like that that made me really respect this company and really be thankful that I was working with them.
Down in the corner there, see the little bookworms in those little bags? I made up little bookworm treats. Um, I didn't give them that many bookworms, honestly. But I made little bookworm bags, and that's what I rewarded the kids with when they set up their dashboard. So, believe me, when I saw how much money my school received, and how much fun we had doing all of the cool reading activities and how little work it was for me. I had my reward. I was sold. But oh my goodness, my librarian heart, <laughs> my librarian heart was totally re rewarded. I gained so much. I loved seeing two weeks of this. Kids soaking up books kids pouring over books and enjoying each other's books. And afterward, I really enjoyed this. Yes, please, sign me up again. Oh my heart, I love Readathon. When it's all over, don't stop sharing your thanks for a while. Try to make sure that every person who participated in any way feels the love and feels appreciated and knows that their efforts meant something. That would be my best advice to you. Do a little something to thank your teachers too. Even if it's just buying each of them, you know, a handful of new books or putting a plate of cookies in the lounge. I don't know if we can do that this year with COVID, but try to do something to show the teachers that you appreciate it because honestly, I've had teachers that were gung-ho and really supported my book fair and their kids had a blast. And I've had teachers that haven't done much at all. And really it's the kids who pay. So I try to reward the ones that really get on board and help me. Well, that is all I have for you. Thank you for joining me today for this AIM session. I hope that what I've shared with you has inspired you to set up your own readathon maybe this school year. And on this credits page down at the bottom, if you have a question for me or if I can um, give you more ideas or just kind of steer you in the right direction, please don't hesitate to email me at that address and I will see if I can find some answers for you that you need. Thanks, guys. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of your sessions at AIM.